it is a Bible story time with Aunt Miriam, and our story for today is entitled, God Finds a Boy. It was just about a hundred years after the flood that God scattered the people who were building the Tower of Babel. We know this because a baby happened to be born just then who was given the name of Peleg, meaning division. For in his days was the earth divided. It is easy to count back to Arphaxad, the boy born to Shem, two years after the flood, and so find the date. And now, the people were moving away from Babel. Some did not go very far. One group, led by Asher, Noah's grandson, traveled north about 250 miles and found the city of Nineveh. Another group went south and built a town called Ur. Still others wandered westward into Europe, and many traveled east into India, China, Siberia, and perhaps across the Bering Strait into North America. Soon villages, towns, and cities were springing up all over the place. Industries were started for people needed tools for building, farming, and cooking. Somebody discovered iron ore and started the steel industry. Someone else found copper ore and how to smelt it. Others came upon gold, silver, and precious stones buried by the flood. And soon goldsmiths and silversmiths were making beautiful ornaments, some of which can be still seen today in museums. Both builders began making small craft to ply on the Euphrates, then larger and larger vessels to sail out into the unknown seas beyond the Persian Gulf. Sad to say, as the people became more and more busy, they began to forget God just like their fathers before the flood. Some even made idols and worshipped them. This is hard to understand, for Noah and his sons were still alive. Noah lived 350 years after the flood, and Shem 500. And one would think that the influence of this man who knew what God had done in years gone by would have kept the others true and faithful, but it didn't. No doubt this older man kept on telling how God had destroyed the world because of sin and how he had saved them in the ark. But by and by, it became to many only an idle tale. Nobody wanted to listen. In the years past, wickedness increased. For when people forget God, they begin to sin. 300 years after the flood, conditions were almost as bad as before it. Looking upon the scene, God must have been very sad. Perhaps he wondered whether it might not have been better if the ark had never been built and everybody had perished in the deluge. But, of course, he could not have let this happen. For had he not promised Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden that someday he would restore all they had lost when they disobeyed him? Had he not said that the seed of the woman would bruise the serpent's head? Therefore, he could not let the seed perish till the victory was won. There was only one thing he could do. Before the world became totally wicked again, he must find somebody through whom he could keep alive the knowledge of his truth and his purpose. Somebody who would love him and be loyal to him always. Somebody who would stand for right, truth, and goodness in an evil world. Somebody who would bring up his children properly and see to it that they too kept his law. Could someone like this be found? 
anywhere, in Nineveh perhaps, or Babylon, for both these cities were quite large by now. Where among all the people was there a boy upon whom God could depend to do what he wanted done? At last, his all-seeing eye turned toward that far-off city of Ur, known later as Ur of the Chaldees. Here lived a man called Terah, who had three sons, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. The youngest of them, later known as Abraham, was a good lad and loved the Lord. Someone, perhaps his mother, had told him the story of creation and God's wonderful love for Adam and Eve in the beginning, and all the joy and glory that were theirs as they walked and talked with him. He had learned how sin had spoiled everything and how God through no one, his own great, 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 great grandfather had tried in vain to save them. And again and again he had listened to the old, old story Abraham had come to love God and to decide that he would serve him all his days. It wasn't easy for him to come to this decision. For most of the people of Ur, including his own father, were already worshipping idols. There were idols even in his own home. So Abraham had to take his stand for God all by himself, and God loved him for doing so. For God was watching him, just as he watches every boy and girl today. And when Adam made his great decision, I can imagine God said, Here is the boy I have been looking for, a boy who will not fail me, a boy to whom I can tell my secrets and with whom I can trust the future of my plan for the redemption of the world. More years passed. Abraham's brother, Haran, died leaving a little boy called Lot. Not having any children of his own, Abraham took special interest in this nephew. Then one day, when Abraham was grown to manhood, his heart still set on following the Lord. He heard a voice speaking to him, and he knew at once it was the voice of God. And God said, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Suddenly, a glorious vision spread out before Abraham. He saw what God was planning for him in the days to come. He saw beyond the walls of Ur to the ends of the earth. He looked beyond the present to the end of time. He saw himself becoming a blessing to all mankind. But this meant leaving home and friends and his old familiar town. Would he go or would he stay? For a moment, all the future hung upon his decision.